Hello, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing an oil and oil filter change on the Benelli TRK 502X. But before we do, roll them credits. Okay, welcome back. Um, very simple job. Most of you out there will know how to do this. However, you always have to start somewhere and there are people who've never done this job before. So please don't think I am teaching you to suck eggs. Um, first thing, always do it on a warm engine. You know, take the bike out for a run. It only has to be five or 10 minutes just to get the, the temperature up to working temperature. Bring the bike back and then leave it for about 15, 20 minutes just to cool down so that the oil isn't scalding hot. If you don't do this, the oil will be very gloopy. It'll be stuck in the engine and you won't get all the contaminated oil out of the engine. By running the engine to a working temperature, it makes it nice and thin and all the oil will drain out all the components of the uh, inside the engine and it should leave a clean engine ready for the new oil to be put back in okay items required for this job very very simple we need a 19 millimeter um, socket we need a 10 millimeter socket uh, socket drive oil filter removal cap um, a torque wrench, a new oil filter and new washer which is um, the HF303RC and that's a high flow filtro racing oil filter and then a good quality oil and here we're using Silkaline Pro 4 10W50 uh, fully synthetic ester engine oil. Um, my advice with the engine oil go off the manufacturer's uh, recommendations and buy um, the best quality product that you can buy. We also have a draining tub to collect all the dirty engine oil. Okay so um, looking underneath the engine I have an aftermarket sump guard on uh, but the standard model also has a sump guard on so it'll be exactly the same technique. Um, here I have four 10 millimeter bolts holding the sump guard on so those are the first uh, things that I must remove because the oil filter is actually behind the sump guard in this area here on the front of the engine. Okay so um, as we can see we've now got access to the oil filter by removing the sump guard however I have come across a problem. The tool I have for removing the oil filter is too small and I don't have the proper tool for actually removing an oil filter of this size. Now there are old school uh, workarounds for this, you can drill a little hole inside, push a screwdriver through and twist it. Um, you can put a, a cable loop around it and tourniquet it up and twist it off but none of those things are really good practice and I'm not going to do that this time. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, stop the video here, I am going to get the correct tool uh, and then we will continue with this either tomorrow or the day after. Okay and we're back and as if by magic uh, I now have the oil filter wrench so we can now continue with the job. Okay so the bike has been run up to temperature, um, it's had time to cool down a little bit so that the oil isn't scalding hot. Uh, the first thing we need to do is get the um, the oil collector underneath so that we don't spill oil all over the path and then we have to remove this sump nut here. Now I think the torque setting for this is 22 newton meters of torque so when we tighten it up we're going to be using the torque wrench and making sure that we put that back to the correct torque setting. Okay so just a simple thing of breaking the seal And then um, 
making sure that we don't drop the washer behind the nut and we don't actually drop the drain nut into the oil collector. And that's why it's also a good idea to have um, some cardboard underneath the oil collector. <laughs> okay, so we'll just let that drain out now. And um, even though it seems to have drained all out when it uh, stops dripping, just leave it for a good 15, 20 minutes after, just to make sure that all the dirty oil does come out. Okay, so after that embarrassing mess up with the oil going everywhere, uh, the engine, the sump has uh, now totally drained and we're ready to remove the filter. So as you can see, I've got the filter wrench attached and it's just a matter of um, unscrewing the filter and taking it off. And be careful because when you remove the filter, again, oil will spill out of the filter as well. Okay, so there you can see that is all the oil drained out the engine. Um, we're now ready to put the new filter back on. We'll just leave it for a couple of more minutes to make sure that everything's finished dripping out. Okay, so it's important before we put the new filter on, just get a clean bit of um, engine oil and just smear it over the O-ring before we place that back on to the engine. This will prevent the O-ring becoming damaged when we tighten it up and it'll make a good seal. Looking at the top of this new filter, this is the type of filter I prefer to use. You can see it actually has a nut that is welded to the outside of the uh, filter. This allows us to put a socket on and use a drive and then we can torque it up to the correct um, recommended settings by the manufacturer when we're tightening it onto the engine. Okay, so now it's just a matter of placing the filter back on make sure that you don't cross thread the filter get it hand tight and then we can use the torque wrench to torque it up okay so all we need to do now is tighten this up Okay, so uh, before we put the sump plug back in, uh, make sure that you have a good look at it, give it a, a good examine, make sure it doesn't look worn or, war or, or damaged in any way, uh, clean all the old oil off it so it's nice and clean, and then also use uh, a brand new copper washer uh, to prevent any oil leaking out once you tighten it up and again this should be tightened up to 22 newton meters of torque okay so uh, pretty straightforward now this is virtually stopped dripping so it's just a matter of placing the sump nut back in make sure that it's not cross threaded tighten it up finger tight what we'll do is we'll just tighten this up There we have it, tightened to the correct torque setting. So that is it for um, all the spanner work. Now all we've got to do is put the new oil back in to the engine. Okay, so that's everything done. Uh, we've got 
the engine oil drained out of the engine we've got the new oil filter on which has been tightened to the recommended tightness by the manufacturer we've got the sump plug back in with a new washer on again tightened to the recommended torque settings by the manufacturer so all we need to do now is replace the engine oil with obviously new clean oil um, the way that i like to do this i use one of these with the tube on and then it's just a matter of placing that down into the engine and then um, what I will do is I will measure out one litre at a time it just makes it more manageable than trying to have a four litre bottle of oil and tipping it in and measuring it so this engine will take 3.2 litres so it's going to be three jugs and then 0.2 litres and then we will be checking it using the little um, viewing screen down the bottom so off we go Okay, so uh, that's the first litre of oil into the engine. What I'm going to do is repeat that now. And when I get in between one and a half and two litres, I'm going to stop. And I'm just going to let the engine tick over just for a few minutes, uh, just to circulate the oil into the oil filter. Okay, so that's just under two litres of oil that's gone into the engine now. At this point, I'm just going to put the filler cap back on. Uh, I'm just going to turn the engine over so it circulates the oil around the engine and enter the oil filter before we continue with the rest of the oil. So just run the engine just for a few seconds. Don't want to run it too long because there's not enough oil in there to make oil pressure. And that's all it'll take and that should have uh, redistributed the oil evenly around the engine and into the oil filter and now we just continue with replacing the rest of the oil one thing it is important to say um, when you do check the oil uh, via the side of the engine with the little viewing screen you need the bike to be on a level uh, it's no good having it tilted forwards, backwards or sideways. So um, you need to make sure that if you haven't got a centre stand, that you get somebody to hold the bike level for you. Ideally, put the bike on the centre stand makes your life a lot easier. OK, so I've put 3.2 litres of oil into the engine. And as we can see, uh, just looking on the side of the engine, that has only filled it to the low mark. Um, the oil is quite thick because it, it's cold so I'll just give it a few minutes to make sure that that is the correct level and the oil is not still draining down into the engine uh, but after a few minutes if it's still on that level then all I will do I will keep adding oil um, until we get it up to the recommended high level okay so there you have it um, we had to put a little bit extra oil in than the 3.2 litres to get it up to the full mark but that is the oil completely full okay now that we've got the correct oil level all we have to do now is remember to put the oil cap back in again finger tight okay so all we've got left to do now is um, start the engine up let the bike get up to running temperature and then we're going to inspect everything that we've touched so we're going to look at the the sump plug we're going to look at the oil filter we're going to make sure that we've got no leaks uh, because it might not be leaking now while the oil's cold however once the oil gets warm and it's under load from the engine obviously there's a lot more pressure there the oil is a lot thinner so we could have leaks so we just need to check that everything is as it should be once we're happy with that then it's just a matter of putting the skid pan back on and bob's your uncle that's the oil change done um, you know, it's a simple job to do. Everybody has to learn how to do it. Um, don't be afraid of doing it. You will make mistakes. I've been doing this for years and years and years and I've still spilt all the oil over my yard because I was too lazy to put any uh, cardboard down. Um, so don't worry about making mistakes. It's how you learn. And, you know, it's better for you to learn from my mistakes.
and to learn from your mistakes. So um, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody for subscribing to the channel. Um, I've got loads of videos coming up. Uh, my next video that I'm going to shoot will be parts from AliExpress. Um, what sort of quality they are, are, are they worth buying or is it worth paying a little extra and going to a reputable dealer? Um, I'm not actually sure when that video will be up or what order the videos are coming because I've got quite a bit in the can now uh, that I haven't edited but as soon as I've edited them all um, they will be coming up. I'm trying to get one up per week. So once again, thank you for watching. I hope it's been of some help to you. Um, if you've enjoyed it, give me the thumbs up press the subscribe button and all that's left to say is bike ride reviews out.